Are you, like most average Americans, starting to sense that your dollars just aren't going as far as they used to? We're seeing a growing number of people start to get an interest in the precious metals. Today, we're fortunate to be joined by Mr. Abram Taylor. He's actually one of the biggest investors in gold back, and he's going to share with us his journey into the precious metals. And we're going to talk about how precious metals can help protect you, protect your wealth, protect your purchasing power. Abram, welcome to Ron's Basement. Hey, Ron. Nice to be with you. I've been a big fan of your show for a while. It's great to see how your success has been happening. I see your numbers just climbing and climbing. So thanks for having me on. Yeah, I, I, I torture a lot of people. They watch my videos. So I, on a serious note, I pre appreciate your kind words. And you have an interesting journey into the precious metals. Mm -hmm. You want to share with us, uh, you know, what what your the steps you went through uh, as you started to learn about the benefits of silver and gold? Yeah, I mean, I'd say probably 10 years ago, maybe even a little bit longer, just noticing how our government's been reacting to how money is and works in the system. And most people aren't paying close enough attention to what they're what they're doing to us. Inflation is just it's a hidden tax. And, you know, most politicians don't want to bring up or ride on any sort of tax increases because they know they can just do it this way and not have to have a, a bad record or voting for something that people are like, oh, more taxes. No, they, they want to perceive, have the perception of, you know, I'm the good guy here. I'm doing the best thing for you guys. But underhandedly, they're robbing us blind. So my journey is as far as realizing what was going on is, is when I started having kids. I said, you know, well, what's the future going to be like if we're on this on this path right now to just spending and spending and sp eventually this is going to come come crashing down. So I really started watching guys like Jim Rickards, uh, Peter Schiff, Andy Sheckman, who we've had on the show and just digesting everything I can get my hands on because this party is going to stop at some point. So where is where is safe? Then I started looking at gold, platinum and silver because I'm going to trust a track record of thousands of years compared to just a couple, like the crypto market. Don't understand it really. And I don't really care to. I think it's phony baloney. I think the only way blockchain could come to fruition is if you have a system where you're, you're operating off tokens that are backed by gold, something mm -hmm. real. So I investigated what is real. You know, what? we like real estate. We like other ventures. But when it all comes down to, to, to bare bones, it has to be what I consider God's money gold, silver, and that's where I, I've been sticking my head. So for the past 10 years, I've been buying bars, coins, anything to get my hands on. <clears throat> but then I started to even think deeper about, okay, well, when the system starts to wind down, I'm still have to operate in the system. I have to go back to the coin shop. I have to liquidate my, my metals and turn it back into fiat. And that really like, I'm still part of the system. This still is, this is still what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Then about four years ago, I walked into my coin shop and I'm going to give him a shout out. That's Kevin at Infinity Coins in Idaho Falls. Great shop, great guy. Love dealing with him. Good partnership with him. So I came in one day and he goes, hey, you're the, mo you're the money guy. You, you really study what money does, how it works. And he goes, I've got a treat for you. What do you got? And he flashed these in front of me. I'm like, what are those? It's like, that's gold money. These things just came out. He goes, if anybody that comes through my shop, you'll understand this because you understand money. So I bought, you know, four or five hundred dollars worth of gold backs, and I sat on them for two months. And I just kept thinking, wow, this is the best money I've ever seen. This is, this is getting away from the system. Like when you see when societies break down, the money unfolds. Like Venezuela, Cuba. Their money becomes worthless. I'm like, why my republic? You could bring in a wheelbarrow and get a, a, a can of Coke. So mm -hmm. I noticed these people were starting to shave their jewelry, like kind of like what the Romans did. They're clipping coins. So when it came to bare bones, they're they're shaving off their jewelry. They're doing whatever they can just to pay in gold and silver. Well, that's a very inefficient way to do it. So in gold back, these are fungible. These act like cash. They, they transact like cash. I thought, this is the, the be all. You can skip the coin shop. And going back into fiat and then having to reverse course, you can go right to the source and people can understand how this works. This is cash, just gold. It's gold cash. Mm -hmm. So that's been my journey. And I continue to keep 
investigating and looking into more corners and just seeing the fraud and seeing the corruption that's going on in our system. And that lets me know that I made the right bet. And I put a huge bet. I contacted the company and they said, well, we're not really taking on investors. We're on our way. I said, I pleaded with them, Kevin over at infinity. I'm like, you have to let me in this thing. I mean, I know that where this thing's headed and I know this is going to be a great company. And I begged him for about a month and he finally is like, okay, you've got great sources. We could, you know, if you can help us out too with your connections and your Rolodex, we'd love to have you on board. So I put my money where my mouth was and I invested millions. Wow. So you, uh, you eat your own cooking as they say, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I liked what you said earlier. I've, I've heard it said many times about inflation and it being a hidden tax. And, and, and you did a great job, at least in my mind, solidifying that idea that, that you know, the, our, our elected officials can either raise taxes or they can tax us indirectly through inflation. And, you know, I sometimes get uh, a, a little upset when I think about inflation, like, why do we, you know, the target inflation, right, the target official rate of inflation is supposed to be that our dollars lose 2% of their value per year. Now, you and I both know that in reality, what we've gone through the last several years has been way higher than any official number that's reported, but it really is a way to kind of uh, secretly or um, or manipul manipulatively steal wealth from people by just uh, deflating the value of the dollar, by deflating, and it's not just the dollar, it's happening in Japan right now uh, at a rate that's you know historic levels. Um, and it's interesting not to get off track here, but the Japanese public are are flocking to precious metals. Right. If you're looking to buy gold, silver or platinum, do yourself a favor and check out Pimbex, the online precious metals bullion dealer and sponsor of Ron's Basement. I was a happy customer before they offered to support the channel. You'll find they have the best prices quality, and service. I think Pembex is best, and you will too. And be sure to tell them that you're from Ron's basement. I don't trust anything that comes to me. I think America has woke up in the last two years with what's gone on with the, the COVID, COVID thing, that everything is everything is dissected, everything is compartmentalized. It's, it's all lies to some extent. They've done a great job over the past 15 years of, of pushing people away from gold and silver, making it seem like, oh, that's just old thinking. That's that's dumb. Look at the shiny mm -hmm. crypto digital coin. Look at this. And the whole perception of investing is they've they've really did a great job of pushing people's mindset away from what is true money. And I think people are starting to wake up now. And mm -hmm. especially like with the numbers we're getting back from the gold back company is most of our people who are buying into our system, they're the younger generation. They're understanding that there's a lot of smoke and mirrors going on. They're not, a lot of people, you know, tease the younger generation. They're not awake, you know, and they're distracted, video games, phones, and all the other crap that goes on. But they're they're waking up. They're understanding, hey, this is all lies. And where do I go find the truth? Kind of like me in a, in a, at a later age. And they're we're filling the gap. I mean, we're selling yeah. gold back like crazy to the younger generation. Yeah. So, it, yeah. It's yeah, a big way. It, it is. And I had a conversation with the CEO of Gold back a couple of months ago. He pointed out that same thing, that, that it's amazing how many younger customers are coming to Gold back. And I think that's a testament to um, uh, to the fact, like you said, that these these younger the, the, the younger generations have different sources of news and information and that they're waking up and probably looking out you know, over the next, for them, you know, the next 50 years or so and thinking, what can I do to protect myself? And, um, and it's encouraging that they're realizing that it's silver and gold. Now I want to, I want to bring up one thing as well. I agree with you. Uh, I don't think most people do agree with me on this, but I'm a firm believer that just in the last couple months, we've seen a real shift in the United States, uh, which I don't think has materialized yet in terms of pure demand for the metals, but an, an awareness shift. Um, and, and people think I'm crazy for saying this, and that's okay, but this the situation where Costco was selling one ounce gold bars got so much press. I mean, even this morning, I just saw an article from Good Housekeeping magazine talking about Costco selling gold bars. 
that people are really starting to wake up. Uh, people are starting to become aware of this, the, the most unusual people that would never talk to me about silver and gold have started to kind of mention it and that there's a, 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 a very early stage uh, percolation, for lack of a better term, in the precious metals in the United States. And I'm gonna promise I'm gonna stop talking here in one second. But in that regard, I think it's so important for us to realize the United States is still the world's largest economy, all right? And we are also, one unique thing about us, we're probably one of the only, and there's a few other Western countries, but we're also a country where the reality is almost no one cares about precious metals. So if you couple the fact that there's so much room for growth, and we saw what happened back in March and April of this year when there was the little banking crisis, you couldn't get, I know the value of gold backs skyrocketed. I mean, my local coin shop, you, you online bullion dealers, there wasn't a silver or gold available. It was sold out or you had to wait a month to get it. That, that, that as if this percolation continues to develop in the United States, as people are realizing like, these dollars are becoming worth less, um, that it could it could lead to some very interesting market dynamics uh, for silver and gold. Right. And like you said, with like Costco selling gold bars, <clears throat> we sell gold backs on walmart.com. I mean, they don't accept them yet, but I think the time will come because no one will want to take dollars. But the, the influence is, is starting to penetrate out there. And like you said, I think the attitude is changing people starting to look what what real value is because there's so much we're just i mean look at what america is we're a marketing genius i mean we're distracted by everything i mean attention spans are like this nowadays and i think people are getting worried i mean it's coming to the point where people are paying so much they see it at the grocery stores they see if they go buy a new car they they're seeing oh my heck this everything's getting so expensive where's true value here so mm -hmm. the the perception on gold and silver is changing and i think I, I tell everybody that I know because everybody comes to me because I, oh, you've been the gold and silver guy for so long. And all you, you were right. You're not dumb. And what I <laughs> see, is I'm trying to set, I'm trying to explain to them, look, when the time comes, it's going to be too late. It's musical yeah. chairs to spend. And that's why I double down and double down and double down. It's not like I'm trying to dollar cost average on a smart basis. Every time I get loose money, I'm going and buying because yeah. when the music runs out, I'll be holding and I'll be fine. Everybody else, and that's what's going to, this This market is so is so undervalued, especially the silver and platinum. When the time comes and the doors open and people start buying, the, the price is going to be outrageous. I mean, yeah, it is going to be outrageous. And, 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 and I think it's important to recognize, too, I, I get your thoughts on this, just how delicate and sensitive these gold and silver markets are. I mean, there's not a big margin of... Uh, of, of availability that can absorb even really the slightest increase in demand. And I don't want to keep going back to it, but look at what happened back in March and April. You couldn't get silver. You go to your right. local coin shop, it was gone. That the, 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 the markets are so delicate, so sensitive. Like you said, when the time comes, it's going to be gone in a flash, right? right? I mean, we didn't really go through a major crisis back in March and April, but it was gone. And um, uh, I just don't think that most people realize even what we have now, there's not a huge supply. Let's you know, just talk about silver brief briefly. You're talking about a billion ounces being supplied from the mines and recycling every year. That's $20 right. billion. That's nothing in the context of the amount of the size of markets. Compare that to the size of the gold market. Compare that to the size of the oil market or any right. market. I mean, it doesn't take a lot um in in for us to see potential for like really dramatic moves and I'll, I'll 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 finish this point with this what we've seen in silver in particular and gold for that matter over the last let's say two years is an outflow in the west from investors from the e the big etfs now there's debate as to whether Gold and silver is really there anyway, but nonetheless, you know, the the big, the two dominant, still dominant ETFs, GLD and SLV, have seen major outflows of money from the West. If we start to see an inflow back in it, and it will, right? I mean, it doesn't, those things go, they go through phases. We start to see money coming back into SLV and GLD, and at the same time, physical demand on the investor side. The market just can't absorb it. It just cannot absorb it. 
Right. I mean, you look at uh, the time it takes to to discover, to open a mind, you're looking at years. I mean, the, the window there is just not there to, like you say, to absorb that. And I could see like the pandemonium at Walmart when people are getting toilet paper, yeah. you'll see their coin yeah. shops. People, people will be in there fist fighting to get their hands yeah. on whatever they can. I mean, that's that's the craziness we're going to see, because when the dollar and we just keep spending and spending every time I see the president, we're, we're spending more, we're giving more. We, we can't do that. The right. time is. So, yeah. yeah, when the time hits, it's going to be it's going to be scary, actually. I mean, I, I, I really foresee like the toilet paper issue, which is silly, but that's what will happen when, when the time comes. <laughs> you make I'm laughing. I have a uh, excuse me, a regular viewer. Richard Cooper from the United Kingdom, he sent me a box with a nice variety of things in it, one of which was an envelope that had 18 U.S. dollars in it. He said that was his leftover from a trip he made to Las Vegas, and he called that Las Vegas toilet paper. So <laughs> maybe, well, we've, maybe got, we, new, we've got the Nevada gold back, so now we can uh, people can grab onto that and say, it's not toilet paper. <laughs> no, no. Well, you, you know, and you and you brought up a great point. I think it's worth us touching on as well when it comes to this supply dynamic uh, uh, situation within both the gold and silver markets. I talk to a lot of CEOs in the mining industry. They all say the same thing. Over the last decade, the big gold mining companies, the big silver mining companies in particular, have not invested in exploration. There are pipelines of new projects. There are pipelines of available ounces that they can dig out of the ground are running dry because over the last 10 years, they were number one because of the price suppression that may be going on in the silver and gold markets. But over that 10 year period, they were fighting for their survival, number one, in a difficult precious metals price environment. Whatever extra money they did have left over, they were paying off debt to shore up their balance sheets, or there was this new demand on the big companies to pay dividends. So they were they were neglecting their pipeline uh, because of that. And now we're going to, in the next two or three years, going to be at a point where they're just, there's just not a big pipeline of new projects, especially in the silver market. There's just right. not. And like you said, if, if let's just say just silver, for example, if silver goes to 50 bucks an ounce a year from now, right? It's not like there's a switch they can turn and say, well, now we're going to produce twice as much silver. No, it's like a 10-year process, five-year, 10-year, 12-year process uh, to, to, to explore, to develop, to permit, to build, all that. Um, sure, there'll be an, an, an increased emphasis on that, but it's not like they can just create more gold or create more silver uh, in an expeditious manner. And there's a lot of people who think we've already reached peak gold, for instance, yeah. And, yeah. and silver as well. Like the, 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 the easy, the low hanging fruit's been harvested. You know, now the grades for what they find are lower. And it's just, a, it's overall just a, when you couple what you talked about with spending and debt, right? Like math shows no forgiveness on the altar of truth. And you couple that with uh, supply constraints within the metals markets. It's a it's an interesting, kind of exciting <laughs> proposition where things may be heading. Well, First Mining Gold is a development company advancing two of the largest gold projects in Canada: Spring Pole in Ontario and Du Parquet, located in Quebec. Each already has five million ounces of gold reserves. But exploration initiatives are underway at both projects to find even more gold. First Mining is well financed, has zero debt, and owns an interest in four additional Canadian gold development projects. Well, and you look to environmental controls. I mean, they're really they're hampered down on, on the progress that a, a mining company can make. I mean, it takes so much to go get open a mine. It's the red tape is is crazy to get these things done. Not only that, but like in silver, I've heard reports of 2030 to 2035 that we might be out. I mean, yeah. silver could be just as at value, just as at, at like what gold is. I mean, it's going to be that rare. I mean, it's going to come back into play. And that's why I said, you know, silver is so undervalued, somewhat platinum. But I think the metals all in general are so undervalued. It, it's the time is coming. But yeah. what 
people aren't really, especially people like us who we pay attention, we understand what's going on. A lot of these uh, surpluses that are being, they're being offloaded off these, off these uh, exchanges and no one really understands there's not much left. So like you say, when the time comes, they can't just turn a key on it and produce more. It's not going to happen. So that window, that's what will cause the, you know, the craziest pandemonium because that window can't be filled. There's going to be a short time where you can get your hands on it and that's it. And you're going to have to wait for years because these things just take up, sometimes up to 10 to 15 years before they can even get started, let alone the the couple of years it takes for exploration to even find it. So yeah. I agree with you. And it's it's scary. It's a sensitive market. I don't think most people realize, you know, how delicate and sensitive that market is and how uh, how 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 huge moves could happen in in the price. <laughs> excuse me, uh, just because of a small increase in demand. Right. And I think, you know, listening to Peter Schiff and and Jim Rickards and Mike Maloney and all these other guys, you know, they've been saying for the last five years, this is the biggest wealth transfer in the history of the world is about to happen. I totally believe it. I mean, it's nothing. I understand a lot of people, especially now, we have not a lot of extra cash laying around to go invest. I mean, gold is expensive. But gold backs are not. This is the, the one of the cheapest entries into the gold market you can get. I mean, a one gold back is about four dollars and fifty cents. Mm-hmm. Slowly stack these like you do silver. I mean, the, to get in is just to get your foot in the door because yeah. the time is running out, and then it will be crazy expensive. I mean, yeah, the gold backs are very cool, and uh, just for the viewers that are watching right now. Um, but why, and you'll do a better job explaining this than I do, but you know, the gold backs have real gold in them, correct? Yes, this is not a this is not an IOU for gold. The, the gold is embedded into the note. The gold is in your hands. It's not an ETF like you know I would never buy because if you don't own it, you don't own it. Mm-hmm. That's what's great about these. The gold is in there and these are fungible. They go from uh, a one gold back and people confuse it when they say that's a one dollar gold back. That's not a one dollar gold back. This is a one gold back. And it's worth about four, four to four fifty. Depends on the, the gold price. But I would rather have it in my hands and be able to to use these kind of notes to to purchase anything I need when the time comes, because just like a. Most of these currencies, no one will want them. You'll bring in a wheelbarrow full of them, and you might get a loaf of bread. Right, right. I want to. I want to emphasize okay. what 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 Abram's holding there in his hand is real gold, and he's holding it in his hand. I liked how you said that. That's not an IOU. And a one gold back is uh, is that a one gold back? Yeah, that's one yep. one thousandth of an ounce one. of gold. Yep. And I, and I want to point out as well, because I found this fascinating, that during the manufacturing process, there's all kinds of checks and balances, from what I understand. One of which is they take a sample, a random sample of the gold backs that were just printed out and actually melt them down to confirm yes. that that exact level of gold is in each. Of, so Abram, and it's a and I have it's a it's a very complicated scientific process where the gold is embedded into those notes. But again, when you're holding that in your hand, you are holding real gold. Yes. This is probably the, the most secure currency you'll find. All of our security measures, the, the equipment it takes to process these things is in the millions and millions and millions of dollars to make these. This is really high tech stuff here. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and, I, and I might add, let me show you mine. It was sent to me by my friend Adam out in New Hampshire. Uh, I think this is one of the coolest things. I mean, I really do. It's like a whole set of gold backs uh, from the South Dakota. And um, it, they're just what I want to say as well. And I don't buy them for this reason, but they're beautiful. <laughs> they yeah. are really, they are really beautiful uh, to, to, to look at and to hold. And you know what's crazy, Ron, is when, when they first started this process to, uh, and then Utah was the, the front runner, and then Nevada, New Hampshire, and we've got Wyoming and South Dakota, <clears throat> we're not having to advertise. We do, we spend practically nothing on advertisement. This is word of mouth and we're selling like crazy. And not only that, we're not having to go in and beg a state to, to, to consider this. They're calling us saying, mm-hmm. we see, trouble. we see big trouble coming and we'd like to have our state on board too. So yeah, that, if that tells you anything, we're not mark, we're not using any money for marketing. This is all done peer to peer, you know, people talking to each other. And the states are calling us to get these things done. I mean, it, it shows you that 
where where money's headed. Yep, yep, yep. And there's definitely a growing uh, movement uh, of states here in the United States that are passing legal tender legislation to allow their citizens to, the key word is reclaim their right to use silver and gold as real money because it's right. in the constitution. It's not anything new. You know, the founding fathers put it in there for a reason. Yeah, it's 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 kind of silly to think, but our dollars that we're using now is unconstitutional. This is constitutional yeah. money. And mm -hmm. what's great about this, Americans, we have a sense of, you know, privacy and freedoms. The way they're trying to push this whole CBDC thing is is bonkers to me because everything will be tracked, everything will be accounted for. This acts just like cash. I can go spend it with Bob the Builder or Joe the Plumber, yeah. and this is privacy spending. No one knows that I I paid him in these, I mean, and we don't track these things. We have serial numbers on there to to verify that they're real, but it's just like cash. We don't know where they're going, and and yeah. I think Americans yeah. appreciate that. Yes, we have to have you know debit cards and and to that extent for high high frequency or high uh, dollar spending. I think. To be honest, I think crypto, the, the crypto coins, I think all this is the biggest scam in history. I think it's a diversion of you know, attention. But mm -hmm. I do believe that the blockchain could come come into play. I think you've got great players in that space like Kinesis who are coming in where you're spending gold digitally. And I think that that's that's the future of, you know, um, transactions, you know, when you're spending on Walmart or wherever else. But here at home, like, you know, the state of Utah or the state of Nevada or South Dakota, all the states we have and you. You're spending money locally; it stays locally, and that's mm -hmm. an even better thing. So the the privacy element to 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 secure our money and know that we're not being watched, I think, is what Americans are really catching on to these things. Is we don't want a big brother looking over our shoulder. They don't. We don't want to be told what we can and can't spend our money on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've said that. I made that point this morning again. That. You know, people in the silver and gold community, there's a large amount of fear surrounding CBDCs. And um, and I understand. Right. But I, I make the argument that at the end of the day, I think that would actually be positive for silver and gold because it would it would then make silver and gold one of the few remaining uh, areas of where, where you could hold wealth in a private manner. <laughs> Everything else would be. You know, cash is gone. Uh, what, what are you going to store your wealth in? You know, you're going to store a thousand barrels of oil in your backyard or no. You know, I mean, there's going to be it's going to narrow the options that people have for for maintaining any level of financial privacy. Right. And, you know, looking looking back in history, when Nixon took us off the gold standard, there's no way. I don't think there's a way you could you could go back into that institution. You can't. We'd have to value mm -hmm. gold. Twenty, thirty thousand dollars an ounce to go back to that cycle. I mean, it's just the the system is broken, and we can't reprint a new currency. We can't make a new dollar. It's not going to make a difference. And the CBDC thing is is lunacy to me. So yeah, I see yeah. the future of money evolving into what we've got here in my hand. It's the only yeah. way back. The only way back to to a a sound platform to operate on. And if you have chaos, you don't have a society. I think this mm -hmm. is going to society because this is real money. Yeah, yeah, and 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 some form of digital gold, uh, whether it be and you know I'm not a blockchain guru, but backed by the blockchain, digital gold that is legitimately backed by you know whatever the token or however the yeah. whatever the correct is actually uh, legitimately and transparently backed by real metal. Could could fit that fill that gap of of you know needing to do uh, transactions on an electronic basis, right? I mean right. that there, but it but it's important that it be trustworthy and transparent, and that people know that yes, I can, and that you can, and that you can redeem at any time as well. And I know that's some of the propositions that are out there. I yeah. know I think it's Zimbabwe has got something going on. I know Texas has a has had a proposition that's that's out there that where you can where you can convert your token into real metal. Now, you're yeah. smiling. Yes. Um, I, I can't say much, but things are coming in, in a, <laughs> in a manner, 
the, well, the suffice commerce. I mean, that's what I have such a problem. Like the crypto coins, I mean, you can't make something out of nothing. It's still nothing. These crypto coins are, it's speculative. Oh, come on. Come on, Abram. I, yeah, I'm a, you, I mean, hold on. Let me grab my Bitcoin here. Okay. There you go. <laughs> exactly. There, I'm going to hand it to you. There you got exactly. it. Okay. All right. I just yeah. gave you one of my Bitcoin. It is what it is, but I, I yeah. you know, I haven't, I haven't put in a lot of effort. I mean, I've scratched the surface a little bit and, and you know, I don't know a, lo a lot about, there's so many companies out there, there's so many coins out there, it's all garbage, but I do see, you know, I'm, I haven't studied much into digital gold, but like I say, there's one company I have investigated, which is Kinesis, that's making the right steps and doing it the right way. And I think more will follow. I think we'll have a different, a new visa, a new MasterCard will be these companies because yeah. no one will, no one will trust the other systems. So yeah. digital gold, that's verified and and can be proven and then gold in your hands gold is yeah. the future money and i think digitally yeah. and that's where we're headed yeah it's worked it's worked for a few thousand years and i i will add that there's a lot of smart people out there that um that believe in bitcoin and that's great i don't have any problem with that uh, uh and i'll also say that one benefit that I think a lot of, of gold and silver enthusiasts uh, overlook, you know, there's this real contention between crypto and physical gold and silver people, is that one benefit that the crypto um, uh, movement, I guess you would say, has, has, has given to the world and to even maybe the silver and gold stacking community is uh, it has educated a lot of people as to the um, challenges presented by the fiat money system. I mean, in a lot of ways, we do share that same level of skepticism and right, right. Uh, distrust in the, in, the, in the fiat money system. Yeah, these crypto people are gold people. They just don't realize it yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, Abram, I want to say thank you for joining me today. This has been a great conversation on behalf of everyone who's watching. Uh, thank you for your generosity with your time and your information. And also, uh, over the last year or so, uh, you've been generous with me with sending some gold backs that I've been able to, to distribute from time to time during my live stream. So we owe you a big debt of gratitude and uh, hopefully we can look forward to seeing you again here in Ron's basement. I appreciate it. Thanks, Ron. And uh, uh, if everybody can go to goldback.com and check us out, I'd appreciate it. And I look forward to our next talk. I appreciate it, Ron. Thanks, Abram. Have a good day.